having created every other thing, he discovered that there was a vacuum. He discovered that something was missing. A unique thing was missing. A unique thing was missing. And what was that? Everybody shout, the woman. One more time, the woman. There was a vacuum. She created a vacuum. And the woman is the very good thing. God's comments after each creation was, it is good. It is good. It is good. But after he created the woman, the Bible says, he said, it is very good. Please, studio, give us Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. It says, and God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was what? Very good. This is after the woman was made. But that it was very good. And the evening and the morning, we are the sixth day. Praise the name of the Lord. The woman is a very good dimension of God's creation. Woman, you are very good. Say, I'm very good. Say, I'm very good. Praise the name of the Lord. Nothing was very good until you came. I'm telling you, read the scriptures. Read that Genesis very well. When he created the sea, it was very good. When he created light, it was very it was good. I mean, when he created the sea, it was good. When he created the fishes, good. But when you came, he said, This is very good. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a pride, what a celebration, and what a privilege. You are the change in the atmosphere. Woman, in the Garden of Eden, you when you came, the atmosphere changed. How do I know that? As soon as you came, Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. He was toiling without you. He was sealing the ground. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 23. He said, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. That's you and I. Because she was taken out of the man. His language changed completely. Woman, you are the changer of the atmosphere. You are a blessing, not a curse. A woman was created because she was needed. I don't want to say the man was created because he was wanted. But the woman was needed. Because God himself said it is not good for a man to be alone. There was a need in his life. And you came to fulfill that need. As a woman, ask yourself at every point in time, am I really meeting need? Am I really meeting the need that God created me in that home? Am I really meeting the need that God created me for in, in, in this man's life, in this children's life? You were created to meet a need. Praise God. And I said here in my note that you're not a biological accident. At all. I, I, I reprimanded a parent last term. She came crying to me that I didn't want a baby. I don't know how this baby came. I don't want to be pregnant. I've had three children. And I quickly stopped. I said, that child in your womb is a destiny child. It's not a biological accident. Madam, stop crying. People are looking for this blessing. Woman, you're not a biological accident. You are created to meet a need in a man's life. Please, sit up to that responsibility and meet that need. Receive grace in the name of Jesus Christ. I say receive grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, to go into the real message, I want to discuss with us or share with us seven major components that are contained in you as an insightful woman. Seven major components. And we will close for today. Seven major components. Number one is the power of utterance. Components, what makes you up as an insightful woman? The power of utterance. Every woman is endowed with this power. It is an acid made to enhance your destiny. 
you are endowed with this power of utterance. It's just a gift from God that is given to you as a woman. If properly used, it will bring unimaginable blessings to your life and to the people around you. The power of utterance. Don't use your mouth or cut short your destiny. As a woman, be watchful how you use your tongue. It can either make you or mar you. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21. The Bible says, Proverbs 18, 20, it says, Death and life are what? In the power of the tongue. I believe in this scripture so much. I believe in this scripture so much. Death and life. That is good and bad. Negative, positive. The two forces, good and bad, they are in your mouth. And they that do what? Love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You shall eat the fruit of your mouth. You shall speak positively in the name of Jesus Christ. So be careful of what you say. Don't talk anyhow. Because there is death in your mouth and there is life in your mouth. There is death in your mouth, there is life in your mouth. But consciously, deliberately, always release life. Praise God. Release what? Life. Be positive. Be positive. Now that's a fantastic episode in Genesis chapter 3. When the devil met Mother Eve, I took time to count the words the devil said to her. He spoke 40 words. But Eve, when she was replying, she, she spoke 44 words. Instead of, that was the beginning of the downfall of mankind. She spoke more than what, what, what was not necessary. And they were negative words. She said, God said, if we touch this fruit and eat it, we are going to die. That was the beginning of the downfall of mankind. Woman, their mouth is very powerful. Many homes, destinies are crushed by reason of the tongue. By reason of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 3. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 3. It says, He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. <laughs> but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. She spoke more than necessary. He spoke just 14 words. She spoke 44 words. Talked more than him. He that openeth his mouth shall be destroyed. But he that keepeth his mouth shall have life. People of God, let's consciously, deliberately keep our mouth. Praise God. Your tongue is your life. You better keep it well. You better what? Keep it well. Be positive with your tongue all the time. Then I wrote here in my notes, I want to read it word for word. He said, when what you see is contrary to what you want, listen, when what you are seeing around you, when your circumstances around you, when your situation around you is contrary to what you want, speak what you want. Hallelujah. Are we together? Speak what you want in the face of that contrary situation. In the face of that stagnation, in the face of that health challenge, in the face of that financial challenge, speak what you want. Don't speak the situation. Praise God. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. He took my infirmities. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. He took my infirmities and he bare my sicknesses. He took it, I don't have it. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever I lay my hands to do shall prosper. This business, you shall prosper. You have not sold for the past one week. Speak what you want in the face of contrary situation. Praise the Lord. And you see that situation change. In, in Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28, God said, what you have said in my ears, I will do it. Numbers 
14, 28. It says, Say unto them, As truly as I live, see the Lord, God himself, as ye have spoken in my ears, God has ears, he hears, so will I do it. What are you speaking per time? What are you speaking per time? Hallelujah. What are you what? Speaking per time. Be conscious of what you speak because the Bible says what God hears you say, that's exactly what he will do for you. Praise God. Speak what he wants. Let no situation make a pessimist out of you. No. Speak what you want. Be very positive about your life. Say only what you want to see. Praise God. There is power in your mouth. The second component, the second component is the power of emotion. The first one, I said the power of utterance. The second one is the power of emotion. Emotion is the expression of your innermost feelings. Now, every woman has the ability to influence people and situations by emotions. Every woman. Every woman. I'm telling you. Very few can resist her tears. However powerful a man is, when a woman wants to pull him down, she will pull him down. You remember something in Judges chapter 15? Verse 17, verse 16 and 17. The Philistines did everything. They did everything to know the secret of Samson's power. They did everything. They couldn't. But when Delilah entered his life, by her emotions, she got what the Philistines could not get by force. She got it with her emotions. That is how powerful you are, woman. With your emotion, you can get anything. She got it. How can a woman ask you, where is the secret of your power? And you lied to her the first time. She tied your hand and said, ah, the Philistines have come upon you. That alone should tell you that she really wants to destroy you. But he went ahead. She did it once, twice. The third time he now told her everything. And so she kept crying. Why? You told you love me and you're lying to me. He could not resist her tears. Woman, God has given this power not to kill. Praise God. But to build. You use your emotions to build. Use your emotions to be sympathetic. Use your emotions to, 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 to bring life around you. Praise God. You are in, and best be in charge of your emotions. At the same time, don't allow your emotions to rule you. Emotions can rule you negatively. When you're very emotional, you want to, you want to go out with everybody. Hallelujah. Use your emotions constructively. Praise the Lord. Use your what? Emotions constructively. There is no Delilah in our midst. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number three, component of the insightful woman is the power of perception. The power of perception. Every woman is given this power. But how many of you know it? All I'm doing this morning is to take a trip inside of you. All these things are inside of you. I'm just taking you through a, a journey to the things inside of you. The power of perception. Now this is on your inside. It is an inbuilt mechanism of a woman that makes her see with her inner eyes. I'm telling you. That is, referred, that is what is referred to as intuition. Somehow you just sense it. You just feel it. You just sense it. When a woman tells you, I feel you should not go out today. I feel you should, you should not just do this business. Don't invest in this business. If you're a wise man, please listen to her. Please listen to her because it's a gift that is given to every woman. And woman, nurture it. Use it to save your destiny. Use it to save your children. Use it to save your husband. And the best way to develop that, this gift of perception is to develop your spirit man. And how do you develop your spirit man? Always pray in the spirit. 
always pray in the Holy Ghost. Build up your spirit man. And as you're building up your spirit man, it will be more sensitive to heavenly news. Hallelujah. It's a gift given to you. Build it. Develop it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost as a woman today, please be on your knees and pray in the Holy Ghost in your closet. Because it's a tool that you can use to sharpen your spirit man. Hallelujah. To sharpen your spirit man. The power of perception. The power of perception. I know a man, a man of God, that would have avoided a, a great accident if he had listened to his wife that day. They woke up that morning and she felt he should not drive. That he should tell the driver to drive him. But you know, man, he said, no, I will drive. I can drive. I've been driving for years. I feel like driving today. And they have a driver. Only God saved him. The accident he had, he almost died. If he ended them in the hospital for months. Woman, you are very powerful. You are so gifted. Be conscious of that. Praise God. Don't neglect your intuitive feelings. It is a gift from God. Allow the Holy Ghost to brood over it all the time. You can't afford to be carnal. You can't afford not to be spiritual. How will you receive a message to save your destiny? How will you receive a message to save your household? You can't afford to be carnal. Destinies are tied to you. Destinies are linked up to you. As a mother, you just don't have only biological children. You have adopted children. You have spiritual children. You have natural children. Natural children are the children married to your children. You have adopted children, children that look up to you as a mother. Their destinies are tied up to you. Glory to God. And with this gift of perception, you can save them. Use it well. Use it well. Number four, the power of love. Number one, I said what? The power of utterance. If you're following me, number two is what? The power of emotion. Number three, good. Now, number four, the power of love. Mm. The woman was born into the atmosphere of love. The woman. The almighty God made her the last born. After creating everything, even the man, you know, brought her to the scene. You know how you are emotionally attached to last born? And last born, they are just naturally spoiled. Everybody shows them love. When I was preparing for this program, when God opened my eyes to see that I am the last born, ah! I said, eh, so I really make younger in the presence. God will show me love. You are the last born of the creation of God. I'm telling you, you are the last born. You were brought into an atmosphere of love. Now, when the man was created and he opened his eyes, God gave him work. God did what? God gave him work. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Let's read that. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. God gave him work. Then you'll see what happened to the woman. Genesis 2 15. He said, and the Lord God took the man and put into the garden of Eden to do what? To dress it and to keep it. He gave him work. To dress it. As soon as he woke up and realized he was a living being. God gave him work. Dress it. Dress it. Dress the garden. But in the case of the woman, in, in that same chapter, go to verse 21. He said, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and did what? brought her into the man. Not, he didn't give her work. He brought her into a, a, a loving man's hand. He brought her into a relationship. When a woman woke up, she was brought into a relationship. He now said, this is bone of my bone. 
and flesh of my flesh. What a, what, a, what a wonderful statement. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. You are born with love inside of you. I'm telling you. There is no sacrifice a woman cannot make as an expression of her love. You heard all the wonderful poems written concerning the woman. There is no sacrifice. The moment a woman loves you, she can go the extra, 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 extra mile. True or false? I'm telling you. When she loves you, there is nothing she cannot sacrifice. There is nothing she cannot sacrifice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost just brought something to my heart. I don't know if I should share it. A sacrifice I made for my marriage. Should I share it? Now, when I was in university, I did my industrial attachment with Texaco overseas. Today, it's, it's, it's a, they have a joint venture with uh, Chevron. So they are now made with Chevron. But I did my IT with them when they were at Texaco overseas. And I was, when I was finishing my IT, they gave me automatic employment and gave me a letter of automatic employment to work with them when I finish university. And of course, after university, I did youth service. I met my husband during youth service as a pastor in Winners Chapel. And as a pastor's wife in Winners Chapel, you're not permitted to work outside the ministry. I said, what? I brought my letter and I showed my husband. Then we are cutting. This is a letter from Texas overseas. Then they just joined Chevron. I would have been a Chevron staff as it were. You know, you know, you know, you know their salary. But you say, but you can't walk as a pastor's wife. You can't walk outside. I said, what? I changed my mind. I won't marry again. Ah. He called all the pastors he knew to beg. This one came, talked. This one came and talked. This one came and talked. I went to my clothes. I said, God, why this sacrifice? This is too much. I didn't bargain for this. God said, go. He said, he gave me a word. He said, when you, anybody that puts his hand on the plow and looks back, is not fit for the kingdom. There is a kingdom there for you. People of God, I took the letter and I tore it. What a sacrifice. I sacrificed my job in Chevron today for my marriage. I would have been a Chevron star. But that is the woman for you. I'm telling you. That is the woman for you. Is it my meals I will sacrifice for them? Is it my comfort? Whatever that we make her children happy, she will, she will do it. Whatever that will make her husband happy, she will do it. Because she's wired up with love. Tell you. She's wired up with love. She's wired up with love. I want to share a fantastic story with us in the book of Mark. That was our call to worship. Mark chapter 14 verse 3. Mark 14 and verse 3. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman. Say a woman. <laughs> Having an alabaster box of oil, of ointments, of spanner, very precious. Very what? Very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. Whose head? Jesus' head. Every woman, you have that alabaster box. Break it. Break it. Don't keep it for yourself. That alabaster box is not for you. It's for the people around you. Break it. <laughs> the Bible says, the men around said, ah, this woman is very foolish. This oil that is so expensive. Bible scholar said it's a lifetime savings. A lifetime savings. They say she should have sold this oil and given to the poor. But she did it out of love. 
she sacrificed that ointment, that precious life savings for Jesus. Woman, you have that alabaster box of oil. It's inside of you. Bring it out. It will benefit your husband. It will benefit your children. It will benefit your adopted children. It will benefit your, your natural children. It will benefit everyone around you. Bring it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Express that love. Express it. Another story in John chapter 20 in verse 15. John 20 verse 15. John 20 15. And Jesus said unto her, not unto him, Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Then she said, Supposing him to be a gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him then, hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, that I will take him away. She was talking about a corpse, but she didn't know she was talking to Jesus. When Jesus resurrected, the first day, Mary Magdalene went to the grave and looked. She didn't see Jesus. That was when she started crying. She now thought he was the gardener. She told him, anywhere you have kept him, please tell me, let me go and carry him. To car a woman to carry a corpse. She didn't even think of the inconvenience because of the love inside of her. She said, I will go and carry him and take him and bury him where he should be buried. Woman, you have so much love inside of you. Give expression to it. Hallelujah. An average woman, you are an embodiment of love. It is a gift. Invest in it wisely. Ask God for grace, for wisdom to express that love. To express that love. And not to turn it to lust. Praise God. It can be polluted. Like the love of Delilah was a polluted one. Don't allow the enemy to pollute that love. Because it's a gift for God to enhance your destiny. To enhance people around you. Love the Lord passionately. Show him so much love. Break that alabaster box of oil inside of you unto the Lord. Love the Lord. Love him. Be committed to him. Spend and be spent for him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 15. Spend and be spent for him. Let me read that scripture. 2 Corinthians 12 15. And I will, I will, with, I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. I just want you to get that portion of spend and be spent for the Lord. Spend for his kingdom. People will offend you. Don't let that stop that love flowing from you. People will offend you definitely. You will come across imperfect people. But that should not stop you from expressing God's love for, to them. You have the power to love, don't hate. Praise God. Forgive offenses quickly. Don't allow any root of bitterness spring out of you. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Don't allow any root of bitterness. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. It troubles. And thereby many be defiled. The moment you allow anger and bitterness to corrupt that love that God has deposited inside of you, people of God, it will define you. Love, don't hate. You have the capacity, you have the ability. Sow it. Sow love, it is in you. Sow it. Sow kindness, it is in you. Sow affection, it is in you. It is inside of you. I'm telling you, just give expression to it. Break that alabaster box of oil. Praise God. Let somebody go to bed thanking you. In the course of my meditation yesterday, I told God 
Lord, empower me. I want to do one, two, three things for you in my, before my next birthday. That from any child that is ready to go to school and does not have a source of support, and you want to go to school up to university, God, empower me to train that child. Lord, enable me to train that child, those children. And I know God will do it. That before my next birthday, or when I'm celebrating my next birthday, the children will line up here and give glory to God. Let somebody go to bed thanking you. Let somebody go to bed appreciating God for your life. Why? Because your love touched him. Because your love touched her. Glory to God. Number five. I said seven will soon be done. Number five is the power of sex. It's a topic people don't like to discuss in church. The church is the best place to discuss it. Because out there they bastardize it. Praise God. Every woman has a gift of the power of sex. It's a gift from God. It's a gift to humanity. It's an integral part of a woman. A woman can be made or marred by its proper use or otherwise. If you don't use it well, it can destroy you. An unmarried woman should never, please singles, listen and listen well. You should never have sex with any man that's not married to you. Never. Because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But when you're married, your body is shared with your husband. Every single under the influence of my voice, please. Sex is in only in marriage. Nobody deserves, no man deserves your body when he has not paid diary on your head. No man. Are you hearing me? No man under the sun deserves your body, even if you are engaged to be married. You are not married yet. Please. If you are doing it, stop it now. No man deserves your body. It is only in marriage you have to express that desire. Only in marriage. And even married women, no other man deserves your body. No other man deserves a body apart from your husband. Please, it does not matter if it's not popular, if it's not being practiced out there, but that's God's word. Flee fornication. We've been taught in the school of disciples the fruit of the spirit, okay, and the works of the flesh. One of it is adultery and fornication. Don't waste your dignity as a woman. There to be different. Womanhood is a blessing don't pervert it. And you can pervert it by having sex with a man that is not married to you. Please don't pervert it. It's perversion. Receive grace. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Second to the last, the power of sensitivity. Number six. The power of sensitivity. The woman is a terrific sensitive creature. She's so sensitive. What a man cannot sense, the woman will sense it. She understands the language of the eyes. You can talk to her with your eyes, sharp, sharp, she will pick it. That's the way you do your face, she will understand. When a baby cries in the hands of a man, he won't know what to do. True or false? I'm telling you, he won't know. He says, Madam, come and take the child. He's the father, he does not know what to do. But as soon as the woman holds that child, she knows that this, this child is hungry, the child is wet, the child wants hugging to sleep. Because she's that sensitive. Praise God. However, the, the enemy tries to pervert that sensitivity and make her hypersensitive. That when, when, the, when she's hypersensitive, she can scatter everything. I'm telling you, she can scatter everything. But that is not the spirit-filled woman. Your sensitivity is to ensure that 
things around you, you, you get messages from things around you and dilute it and use it well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Watch your sensitivity. It's an asset. Don't allow the devil to make a liability out of it. Number seven, the power of creation as I try to round up. I told myself by 12 I should try and round up. The power of creation. The woman has the power of creation. She's the greatest partner with God in creation. She's the greatest partner. What a privilege. What a blessing. Amen. Everything about the woman is a blessing. Her breast gives suck. No man, even those guys that said two of them will marry, let them believe her now and let them breastfeed. That's what I always tell them. A man will marry a man. Okay. Let one of them get pregnant, then deliver and breastfeed, which is impossible. It's only the woman under the surface of the earth that is wired up to breastfeed a child. Amen. The woman, her breast gives suck, her eyes give love. Have you, have you observed that when a child is sucking, the only place he looks at is the woman's eyes? I'm telling you. When a child is sucking, it's the eyes. Because her eyes is giving message of love. Now, when a woman wants to bring down a man, it's her eyes. She will use her eyes to bring him down. Her eyes shows lust. Woman, you're very powerful. Lord. I'm just taking a trip inside of you. I'm telling you. Her eyes bring lots. Only God knows the kind of eye that Delilah showed something that something could not keep the secret. <laughs> a woman wants to destroy you. She made first attempt. She made second attempt. Third attempt. You, are, you now told her everything. Ah, I raised them for Delilah. <laughs> Kai! Her ears listen. Yes, she's always there to listen. In fact, at, it got to a point my children, I told them, don't always call me. Call your daddy too now. Call him. You need this. You, you, you need this. Ah, ah. Call your daddy small too. But they, because they know that I'm always there to listen. I'm always there to listen. Even when me, I am not comfortable, I will hide my discomfort so that they will not know and listen to them. Glory to God. Our hands, the cuddle. I heard the story, I don't know how true it is, that when a child is sick, when a, a child is sick, just let him be carried by the mother. The heat of the mother is a source of healing to the child. Woman, you are powerful. Can we celebrate the women in the house? Woo! Glory to God. Now, apart from biological procreation, on your inside is the womb to carry visions. On your inside, you have a womb on your inside to carry visions, to carry dreams. Woman, give birth to those visions. Give birth to those dreams. I just shared my own vision with you. I said, but that my next birthday, Lord, I want to line up women, children that are, are paid school fees for, that their parents could not afford to pay school fees. And so many other visions are there. Bring them out. You have a womb inside of you. And you have dreams inside. You have dreams, visions inside. It's not just to cook good egusi soup and not bolo soup. Are you hearing me? It's not just to dress well and look good. It's part of it. But above it all, let destiny be touched by you. Amen. Let creation thank God for you. You heard one of the poems that you are a nation. You are not just an individual. You are an institution. You should die as an institution. You are a nation. 
You are not just you alone. A lot of destinies are looking up to you. There are dreams inside of you. Give expression to them. Give expression to them. There is something inside. Dream another dream. Amen. Take another step. You are going to school. When you finish, go to another school. You are doing one business. Dream to add another business to it. You have a civil service job. Trust God to do a business to add to it. Amen. There's so much inside of you. Give expression to it. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Tell God, Lord, I receive grace on this mountain. I will not leave this world without giving breath to those dreams and those uh, uh, visions. I will not.